So where were we? We we captured some picture. We captured some images. What do yeah. what do we do with them? We don't know how they turned out. We hope everything was as we expected it to be. Good exposure, in focus, color balanced, everything legible, barcode present, all labels present, color checker, ruler, check. So what's next? Now we get to process them. We get to see the results of our labor. So, like I just said, we want to scroll through all the images we captured to make sure they meet our expectations. <coughs> they need to be satisfactory. You don't have to check every single one of them. So if one person in an imaging session captured 500 specimens, check every 20, every 30. You want to check a few things. You want to check, we'll check these things and we'll want to make sure all the important things in the specimen are present in the image. I want to make sure all the labels are visible. I can read them, they're clear. The color checker and the scale bar is present. The image is rotated right side up and the barcode matches the file name. <clears throat> and for this, I use Lightroom. It allows me to do all of those things, as well as check the file names, check the focus. I can add information, just like Moses was talking about before. We can embed metadata into the images, meaning in addition to the date and the time and the camera and the lens, all the information about the imaging the imaging equipment itself that's embedded into the image, we can embed additional image, whatever we want. So I like to embed into New York Botanical Garden herbarium specimen images the creator, the person who digitized the specimen, and the copyright, the New York Botanical Garden. Um, those are the two main things. But if you're, if you're embedding metadata into your field photos, for example, maybe you want to embed locality information, collector, collector collection number, etc. And then with regard to image processing, we'll confirm the exposure, the contrast, we'll adjust the, we'll check the color balance, we'll sharpen it just a little bit, and we'll remove chromatic aberration. This is a photography term to refer to this color fringing around areas of high contrast. So sometimes when you zoom way in and you see an area where there's white and black and you see a little bit of red, or you see a little bit of blue, we can get rid of that by making just a, a little bit of a change in the settings. So you can he see here, we'll adjust the sharpening just a little bit. Here's our histogram. It's a little bit off to the side here. The exposure here looks good, so we'll see. So what's, what's the step, the first step? There's a series we'll go through. The first is we have to import the images into the software. They're on the camera, or they're on the computer, I've either saved them to another computer where I'll, where I'll do the processing or at that same computer I'll start the processing. So I import them into Lightroom. I like to use Lightroom not only because it allows me to see all the information about uh, the images with regard to exposure, focus, etc., but uh, it organizes the images in a catalog. One thing that's really important to remember about Lightroom is that it does not change the, I the original image. So everything I do with regard to sharpening, uh, adjusting color balance, etc., does not affect the original image. It's only a set of instructions that the software will perform when I export a new version of the image. So these, this list of instructions, which also includes all of the metadata, um, gets saved to a specific folder or a specific file in, in your Lightroom folder. And it's got the file ex extension LRCAT. And you can create a number of these catalogs according to uh, maybe one catalog for your field photos, one catalog for your barium specimen images, one catalog for your family. And you can keep them all separate. And in any one of those, you can keep the textual information and all the words that you might embed into the images separate. So you wouldn't want to embed or have in your list of potential words to embed into your image at Linda when you're working with herbarium specimen images, for example. 
So remember, the edits are not applied until you export. And this is completely different from Photoshop. When you open an image in Photoshop, you start to change it. And, if, and the only way you don't change it is if you close and don't save. This, you can change whatever you want, start back at zero. So what do we do? Let me first introduce you to how the software is laid out. We have what we call panels. We've got a left-hand panel, top panel, right panel, and a bottom panel. In, in each uh, screen, we have different modules as well. We have a library module and a develop module. These are the two that we'll work with most. The library module you can think about as everything textual or human readable about the image. Camera make, the, the date it was captured, um, keywords you want to add, the title of a picture if you want to add it, who took the picture, etc. So that's information the camera captured, including GPS coordinates if your camera is capable, or anything you add, any textual information you add. And you can view here on this right hand side all of that text. Let me see. In addition, you can filter all of your images. So if you have a catalog with 100,000 pictures and you want to find only the pictures that, have, that were taken in Bolivia, if you have embedded in any of those images the word Bolivia, you can search for that term. So if you took pictures in Bolivia in 2003, as well as in 2014, with one search, you can bring them all together and see them. You can do this for flower. You can do this for morphological parts of any animal. Whatever information you put in here, you can query and filter by. Likewise, you can do that um, attributes. You can, you can grade your pictures if you like. Those I really like those I don't really like. And if you've got pictures that you really like across many different field trips and you want to see them all at one time, you just filter by whatever is that category and pull them all together at once. So all of this is done in the library module. In addition, you see these two things down here. This is a, an icon that's telling you see many images at one time or just focus on one. Down here, Although we don't have any images in here yet, this is what it looks like when you first start the program or you first create a new catalog. You can change the size of the thumbnails that we'll see here with this slider. So to import the images, you press import. And it'll open up a window. You navigate to the folder that contains the images you want to import. So this will be in the folder that I saved to day five. It's called Lightroom workshop test photos, I can't remember the name of it, but we'll go through it. Once you select, you can either select individual pictures or you can select the full contents of a folder. So here I'm selecting to import all photos in the selected folder. I like to keep my folders um, named by date and that date refers to the date I backed up the images or the date I transferred the images from the image working station to the, my, com my image processing computer. <coughs> One thing that's really nice, when you're importing into Lightroom, you can embed into the images all at once, in the very beginning, anything you know you'll want to embed in all of them exactly the same. So if I know I want to embed in every image the New York Botanical Garden copyright information, I can do it in the very beginning. Likewise, if I know Lisa, one of my photographers, did this whole batch, I can import her name at the same time. So you can select here under metadata, you can create a new preset. So if I know that Lisa's images will all have this same information every time I process Lisa's images, I can create a preset for Lisa. I can create a preset for another digitizer. So you name the preset, you enter into the fields, the information you want to capture and embed into every one of those images. Make sure the box is checked yes, and this will be synchronized across all of the images. And once you're satisfied, press create. All of these fields you can populate, and this is a very brief list relative to, to what's possible. <coughs> Eventually, your images will be in. 
Your raw image files will take a little longer to import than a JPEG, but give it time. And as it's importing, you'll see up here, you can't see it now, but you'll see a status bar right there and it'll give you an idea of how much time. Oh, can also add edit metadata after import. Oh yes, so if you forgot to embed that metadata as you are importing, you can always do it after the fact. You can do it one at a time on individual pictures or you can do several. So over here we see this is the folder I just imported. It's got 36 pictures in it. It's showing me the parent folder. It's in my hard drive C. I see over here my name was imported along with my title. And this is saved as the NYBG herbarium preset. So that's good. I see my metadata was imported. If I should have forgotten to do that, I can select the images that I want, fill in the, the, the information that I want, and then press, you can't see it here, I can't see it here, it says sync metadata. If you, you sync metadata, it'll apply those changes to all the images you have selected. So one of the things I like to do in this, m in this library module, before I go on to any image editing, because I need to make sure that the images contain all of the information that I need them to contain, regardless of whether or not they're color balanced, is uh, I need to confirm that the barcodes match the image file names. And this is really easy to do in the loop view as opposed to the grid view. So I zoom in on the barcode. Our barcodes tend to be placed in the lower part of the sheet, so I can zoom in on one and then scroll across every maybe 10, 15 or so and just make sure that they've all got um, the proper file name. I can also confirm that it's in focus. If I can see straight away that that barcode's not in focus, it needs to be reshot. And if I should find any barcodes or any image files names that are incorrect and don't match the barcode, I can change that right here. And when I change it here, it changes it where the image file name is. That's the one thing that really does change. It's not in the instructions. This does change the image, but only the name. Okay, so once we're happy with all of the textual information that's in the images, then we want to think about editing um, with regard to exposure and color balance and sharpening. But I want to do that on a batch by batch basis. So ordinarily when our digitizers come in, the camera they're working on is set to specific settings for the ISO, the aperture, the f-stop. They don't have to think about that. It shouldn't change between sessions. But just in case, I always create batches for post-processing based on the day, based on who, and I confirm that none of those things that affect, uh, that affect exposure, including shutter speed or aperture, is different. So if someone took a picture at 1 over 60 as opposed to 1 over 40 on the same day, then these images might look different and I want to treat them differently than I would treat those that have 1 over 40. So pay attention to those parameters and group your images that way. 